In 2015 at Star Car, we found a number of red deer antler frontlets, which we think are probably masks or headdresses, possibly worn by shamans. Most of these are very fragile, but this one we see here is quite robust, although it still needs to be handled very carefully. What we can see here is that this is not a whole red deer skull. It's been worked down and the antlers have been split in order to possibly make them lighter. We've looked at all our headdresses in the labs under the microscope and also using laser scanning in order to create models of them. And this is really to look at the marks in detail and to try and understand the ways in which they've been manufactured. In order to really understand this manufacturing process further, we did a number of experiments. Here we've got a red deer skull and a piece of flint. And the first stage of the process is to remove some of the tines from the antler. And this is done here by scoring the antler with a piece of sharp flint round and round and round, and then using a stone to smash the tine away. Following this, we tried to split the antler in two, as we saw with the archaeological specimen. This involves, again, more pieces of sharp flint and creating a groove along the antler, which is worked up and down for a long period of time. Here we can see the skin being removed now that the antler has been worked. And this is, again, using a sharp piece of flint. It's being done very, very carefully so that it comes off in one piece and that it can be put back onto the frontlet at the end. Once the skin's been removed and it was put by the fire to dry out, the bottom part of the skull had to be taken away. This is the lower jaw, again cut away with a sharp piece of flint. And you can see that the top piece of the skull still retains the teeth, the upper teeth, the eyes and also the brain and a lot of bone that needs to go before it turns into a headdress. The next part of the process is to put clay on the part of the skull that we want to retain. This is well packed on because the skull is about to be put into a fire. The fire then will heat the bone um, and make it more brittle in the areas which is not packed with clay and it will help in the removal of that bone and also the brain. Once the skull has been on the fire for quite a long time, it comes off again. You can see that the bone is very black and a stone is used to smash away this burnt bone, which has become very brittle. And what we've seen under the microscope is that the, um, this process creates very similar uh, marks to what we see on the archaeological uh, headdresses. Finally, the clay is removed and we're left with a headdress shaped piece like this with the brain removed. And the final part is to peck holes in the, the skull just like in the headdresses we find on site.